Hello and welcome. Um, my name is Max Tracy. I'm one of the admissions counselors at the University of Vermont. I'm really excited to have everybody here today. I'm going to be doing a short presentation uh, followed by an open question and answer period. Um, you should see a dialogue box where you can post questions. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what makes the University of Vermont unique, um, as well as talking about our admissions process, what we require and look for in an application, all that kind of stuff. Um, but before I get started, are there any topics or major areas, um, academic areas of interest that, that folks would like to like me to cover? Just feel free to post them in the question box and I can, um, I can see that on my, my computer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just start by talking about the university and sort of some of the more unique aspects of the University of Vermont. Um, just to get you started and oriented a little bit, um, we're located in Burlington, Vermont. Um, Vermont is in the northeastern corner of the United States, so we're about, uh, a, a, about three, two hours from Montreal, Canada, about five hours north of Boston, or about five hours north of New York, and then we also have... Um, we're also about three hours north of Boston, and so in terms of the um, in terms of the different majors that we have, um, you know, in terms of the university itself, it's um, on a historic campus. It's a you know a, a university that's been around for hundreds of years, and um, the the university itself has over a hundred different academic majors. So there's a lot of different things to choose from, ranging from everything from nursing and health sciences to um, the you have um, some really great um, social science majors like history, anthropology, biology, chemistry, those types of majors, as well as animal science, zoology, plant and soil science. Um, some of our most popular majors are environmental studies and environmental sciences. Um, we do also have um, radiology as well as performing arts. So, I mean, I can talk about the, each of those specific majors as I understand some students are interested in those. So I'll talk about those. Uh, in a second here, um, but in terms of the, the majors, there's a lot of different things to choose from. So if you are decided and you do have a specific idea as to what you're interested in, chances are we do have that major. Now, if you are undecided and you need a little bit more time, we have a significant degree of flexibility. So you can um, choose, um, be enter the university as an undecided major. And so you have a bit of flexibility there to really, you know, try out several different things before committing to one particular major track. And that can be really helpful for those students who need a little bit more time to try out several different things that they weren't able to at the high school level. <clears throat> Within each of the academic majors, we maintain a really personalized educational feel. And that starts with having very small average classes uh, in terms of the size. Um, in fact, the average class size is 31 students, and 98% of the courses are taught by professors, so not teacher's assistants, graduate students. These are actual professors who are teacher scholars, meaning that they do research uh, as well as teach, so you have that kind of balance happening between the professors, and that's really nice in that you're able to, um, you know, really work with them you know, directly on research that they're doing, on projects that they're doing. You hear about that research regularly in the classroom um, because they're constantly bringing it in, sharing that research, giving you a chance to digest that research. And um, it's really, really nice because it's a, a very dynamic kind of educational environment, one where you're, you, you know, you're working with people who are very passionate about their particular subject. The other thing that's really nice about that smaller classroom size is it means that we're not just asking our students to take tests and write papers, as you might see in a much larger classroom environment. Rather, our students are able to, to do um, what's called experiential education or learning by doing, and that's pretty much our entire educational philosophy at the university, is that students learn better when they actually put into practice the knowledge that they've gained in the classroom. So we try and get students out of the classroom in a variety of different ways. So um, just to give you kind of an example of how that would work with radiology, we actually have the largest hospital north of Boston right on our campus. Um, and there's a, a nuclear medicine technology major in our College of Nursing and Health Sciences where students are actually able to work hand-in-hand -hand with radiologists in that hospital, getting first-hand experiences um, and you know, technical knowledge of how, the, you know, how you actually apply those treatments um, to patients uh, in real-world settings. So, 
we really give our students a, a really strong preparation. And that preparation um, takes place right on campus, so it's really easy to get to that hospital. It's, it's one of the top uh, hospitals in the state, if not the top hospital, and it's about uh, and it's la and it's on our campus. So you don't have to go very far. It's right there. It also houses our medical school, which is ranked fifth in the country for primary care. So very strong uh, opportunities coming out of sort of medical field for that hands-on learning to take place. In the performing arts, we have everything from music, where students will participate in, in everything from uh, sort of small practice room, kind of one-on-one -on -one sessions with professors where they're trying out new ideas, learning um, maybe more specific um, arrangements. Um, we also have several different <coughs> ensemble groups where students are actually able to work with faculty and other students um, on a variety of different types of music. Um, we do also have a dance major um, as well as a theater major. And within each of these, the students are really engaged in all aspects of production. So really, uh, you know, in theater, they design costumes and sets. They direct, write and direct plays. In fact, we have a, a, a festival of one-act plays where students will actually write and direct plays. Um, and other students have done really cool theses, um, like, you know, bigger research projects. Um, one person, one student did a really interesting adaptation of fairy tales or legends, myths, that kind of a thing. Um, and he built himself huge stilts and he actually went down uh, into downtown Burlington, um, which is not far. It's less than a kilometer away from our campus. And he told these, these stories on uh, one of the bigger streets in town. Um, and so he, um, you know, did that as part of his senior project. So there's just a lot of different options that you have as a, as a, you know, as a performing arts student to not only get sort of the knowledge and background in it, but you can also um, do some really interesting stuff like that. Um, another really cool thing that just happened in the theater department, I mean, one of my friends is a theater professor, and he was telling me that um, he teaches a um, course about musicals and singing in musicals, and so um, they did a, uh, uh, they sang some, uh, they, one of the people in the class wanted a little bit older was uh, wanting to ask their partner to marry them and so uh, the class sang a, a song from rent as, as part of this and so this was something that the professor helped them to do and they they, they all sort of sang the song and then they asked him to marry them and it was this whole big thing so you can do a lot of different things basically with all the different majors so kind of interesting kind of an interesting uh interesting setup for sure um within each of the different majors they really are really engaging um, students on a variety of different levels and also encouraging students to really if they have an idea to to not just you know sort of put it on the back burner but to to, to let them try out and so that's where that kind of a thing happens it doesn't happen every day um now in terms of the the uh, the the campus itself as well, even though we have all these different majors, we maintain a very smaller personalized education or, or a very sort of, um, you know, strong commitment to uh, social justice and environmentalism. This is a big theme. So even though there's a lot of different majors, and I think it can be said that there's not really one particular kind of UVM student, but rather many, um, we really pride ourselves on having uh, you know, a commitment to making sure that all students are treated, you know, fairly, and that regardless of, you know, background um, and that kind of a thing, but that also we're a university that's trying to become one of the top green public universities in the country. So making sure that we are taking every necessary step that we possibly can to be, um, you know, as green and as environmentally friendly. And part of this is that we have a school dedicated to the study of the environment called the Rubenstein School of Environment and Natural Resources. Um, but part of it is just the, the type of students that we tend to attract. They're really not just engaged in sort of, you know, what the, you know, uh, what they can do to, to, to graduate, you know, as quickly as possible. I mean, students do want to stay on track and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, they're really engaged in, um, you know, studying world problems, but also taking action on them. So one example of that would be that students really felt like we were wasting a lot of um, plastic and, 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 and resources with bottled water on campus. We, have, we were using you know, over 100,000 bottles of water on campus a, a year. And so the students came up with a proposal to um, ban bottled water on our campus. So they did that, and then they had all the drinking fountains modified so that you can go and fill up your, your water bottle there. Um, and it's just part of a broader commitment to really not just um, learning about problems, but making sure that we're taking action on them. So that's a little bit about sort of the campus environment itself. Uh, we're located... Uh, in Burlington, um, so it's a, not an isolated campus as you might find with some pub larger public schools, um, but rather we're in the largest city in the state of Vermont. Uh, it's a city of about 42, 43,000 people, so it's not massive, 
Uh, it's incredibly safe. You can walk pretty much everywhere um, and not have to worry about it, though a lot of students will have bikes um, and bike around campus, that kind of thing. But as I said before, it, downtown Burlington is less than a kilometer away, so you're very uh, able to access it and get a chance to you know, see the different uh, elements of the city um, and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's really, really nice in that sense. Um, there's four blocks that are closed off to cars, so four city blocks that are all shops and restaurants and um, different street performers. There's all kinds of different performing arts, um, things that happen in our city. So um, this week we have Anushka Shankar coming to the coming to the theater downtown. She's a, a sitar player. Um, we've had you know all kinds of different performances happening um, throughout um, the last couple of weeks, and you can see music pretty much any night of the week in Burlington. Um, there's also all kinds of different festivals that happen. So we have different um, theater festivals, different arts festivals. Um, there are also different um, music festivals that happen in the city. So really, it's 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 a really nice sense of balance that our students are able to get because they can, on the one hand, have this experiential education experience on the campus, but that then, you know, if they want to get away and go and have a nice bite to eat or maybe study in a coffee shop or, um, you know, do something like that, they're able to do that in the city itself. So it's really nice in that sense. Um, and the other way that some of our students will have fun, uh, in addition to sort of all the things that happen in the city, is that um, they're able to participate in over 150 clubs and organizations. So um, you can, um, you know, do everything from community service to different sports. We're actually a Division One sports um, school, so we have um, all these different highly competitive sports. You can get tickets if you don't want if you don't play the sport and go and see the games. Um, we also have um, all kinds of different um, uh, levels of sports. So depending on your level of seriousness, you can just get a group of your friends together and, and still compete and play uh, against other people. Um, there's also a really great. Um, a, environmental organizations, different cultural organizations, um, different religious organizations uh, of pretty much every different faith uh, on our campus. And that really speaks again to the fact, as I was saying before, you know, with regards to the different majors, is that there's not really one kind of student that goes to the University of Vermont, but rather many different kinds of students. So that should give you like a, a little bit of an idea of sort of the, the campus environment, you know, and, and all the different things that are available to our students. Um, the other thing, you know, about sort of the university um, is the emphasis on research. So our students are able to not only participate in these clubs where they take leadership of an organization and plan activities, bring speakers, all that kind of stuff, but students are actually also able to get funding for where research if they so want to do that kind of a thing. And that can happen in the performing arts, but it can also happen in the medicine, medical field. And that's because we have a, a medical school right attached to our, to our university. So you have opportunities to develop really uh, in-depth and uh, more complete understandings through doing your own um, independent research projects. So that should give you um, a little bit of an idea of sort of the academic side of the university. Um, do you have any questions based off of that before I go on? Okay, so when you apply to the University of Vermont, you will apply to one of seven different schools and colleges. Each of those different schools and colleges um, will have slightly different entrance requirements. All of those are available on our website. These are things that you probably will have to do to graduate your particular school in general. So things like taking, uh, we ask the students to take um, you know, four years of English, uh, three years of a social science, three years of mathematics. So some schools like College of Nursing and Health Sciences wants to see four years of math, four years of science. So those of you that are interested in radiology, um, you'd have to have um, four years of math uh, as well as science. Otherwise, we require two years of a lab science and then two years of the same foreign language. So pretty standard um, and pretty basic requirements um, from our particular school. So if you're taking, um, you know, your the, you know, those courses, you should be, you know, totally fine. That's, that's one of the things that we look for first and foremost. Then we'll also um, take a look at, um, within those schools and colleges, you'll have a professor who will be your academic advisor who will help you to stay on track to meet all the different requirements of that particular school. So um, the different schools and colleges have different um, requirements for you to graduate. They want you to take certain courses. Um, nursing, or the College of Nursing and Health Science, under which radiology falls, will actually be 
um, a lot more structured. So you'll have a really sort of clear path through the university, what course you have to take first, then second, then third, sort of to get you started started off. Um, whereas the performing arts like theater, music, those kinds of things, they fall under our College of Arts and Sciences, which is a lot more open-ended. It's sort of like a smaller liberal arts school that really encourages our students to um, take a variety of different courses um, and not only in their particular major area. So that's just a little bit sort of about that, those different schools and colleges. We do also have an honors program. Uh, we aim to enroll about 150 students in that honors program. You're automatically considered for the honors college and international students are absolutely able to be considered for that honors program. Um, so we absolutely love to have honors students uh, in that particular program. And those students will take what's called the seminar style course. That's a sort of smaller course size. So we're talking maybe 10, 15 students, really strong discussion focus where you'd be asked to be bringing in a particular um, you know, having read something or prepared something and then really being willing to share that with the class. And then that c c culminates in what's called a senior thesis where you research first semester and then write first semester. So the students really have that opportunity to do um, pretty in-depth research, though that exists for all of our students, as I said before, um, as research is something that we really strongly encourage across all majors. Um, in terms of the application process itself or in what we consider in the application, um, we look first at your academic record, looking first to see um, if you meet those minimum entrance requirements that we were just talking about. Then we'll talk about um, different, uh, different. Um, we'll, then we'll look at um, things like um, the strength of your schedule, what kinds of courses, and your um, counselors will be able to help us to understand what types of courses you took, um, how rigorous those courses were within your particular school, because we do look at you in the context of your particular school. Um, and then in terms of the, uh, the application itself, um, or the, I mean, the, 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 the grades, we look at your GPA, and if the class rank is provided, if not, it's, it's not a problem at all. For the GPA, I would say it's right around a, a B plus or A minus range. Um, if if that makes sense to the grading scale that you use, that's about what that's what we usually standard say. Though that's not uh, a cutoff, so um, there's not a, a a line where if you fall above it, you get in for sure, and then if you fall below it, you will not be admitted. That's just not how it works. So we really try and encourage our students to be involved in a variety of different levels, um, and and you know the, the the grades are you know one of those sorts of levels that help us to kind of figure that out. Um, now we'll also look at testing, um, and we ask students who have not been, uh, who have not done at least three years in an English language uh, taught school. So I'm pretty sure you, you all are taught in English um, primarily throughout your high school experience. So if that if that is the case, then you would be uh, then you wouldn't have to take a TOEFL exam. Uh, if, however, you have not had uh, at least three years of English instruction, so English in all your classes, then you'll actually have to take uh, the TOEFL. And the minimum score for, for the TOEFL, that's one area that we do have a cutoff, is a 79. So we need students to come in with at least a 79 TOEFL score. Um, in terms of the other testing, we do also ask that students take an SAT test or ACT. Usually for international students, it's easier for them to take the SAT. And for the SAT, what we really need to see is um, you know, just, you know, strong performance across the board, though, for radiology students, they're really going to be emphasizing the math section on that particular test. Um, usually, on average, university-wide, um, the scores are in the 600 range, but for international students, they tend to be a little bit lower than that, um, which is, you know, which is indicative of the fact that we don't really have a cutoff necessarily for that. We're doing what's called a holistic review, so we're taking a lot of different factors into account whenever considering an applicant. So that's sort of the, the, the testing piece of it. Um, now, we also ask that you write an essay, and this is really important uh, on a couple different levels, um, especially for international students, because it tells us you know, what makes you you. It really, in many cases, exposes us to, to your individual, who you are as a, as a person and you know, what you're doing. And then it also gives us a chance to really uh, understand um, something that you're passionate about. So I usually tell students to, to spend a good bit of time getting their applications ready, um, and especially spending time on their essay, making sure that it's not only grammatically correct, because sometimes an issue that we run into with non-native English speakers, well, and native English speakers too, to be honest, is you know grammar and structure and all of those kinds of things. So really make sure that you have 
really strong grammar that you've gone over that essay several times, but also make sure that you're writing about something that you really, really care about, because that's something that's going to be really important moving forward. We love to see students who are um, really committed um, and who um, have really interesting things to say, and that comes across if you pick a good essay topic. Now, in terms of the, the letter, we also require one letter of recommendation. It um, should come from a teacher, you know, someone who can really speak to your academic strengths. As well as, um, we'll also look at your um, your um, uh, extracurricular activities, so clubs, organizations, all that kind of stuff. Now, in terms of the application itself, you have a couple different options um, for deadlines, but the application itself is the common application. So you go to commonapp.org, so C-O-M-M-O-N. App .org, and you're able to um, log in and create a profile and use that application form to apply to multiple different schools. Um, so it's a really great format. Some of you may have already gone through that process and are using it already. Um, for those of you that have not, you can log in and, and, and see that. It's pretty straightforward. You fill out your basic information. There's a place for you to upload your essay. Um, you know, and then your, your counselors will send along your transcripts um, from the school as well as um, you'll want to have your testing sent to us from the SAT um, and then in the case that you had a TOEFL sent, you, you took the TOEFL, you'll still want to have that sent to us as well if you don't have that three years of English um, schooling um, taking place. So um, in terms of the application deadlines, um, we have a couple different options for students. Um, I don't know where all of you are in your process, if you've already applied or still waiting to apply, um, but we have an early action process if you are um, a junior. Um, next year, you can apply on November 1st, and then your 55 year application fee uh, is waived for that first for that first um, type of application. You also find out quicker. You apply on November 1st, but then you hear back in middle of December, so it's a quick turnaround in terms of when you apply versus when you hear back. We also have um, regular notification, which is due on January 15th. So those of you who um, are in your last year of of uh, secondary school or high school, um, you're able to apply to the university still. We, we have plenty of time, in fact. Um, and what's due on uh, January 15th is the application. Um, so any supplemental materials, like your transcripts or your test scores, all that can come later. So that's how we work our process. We try and make sure that if the student is, has, a, has applied by that time, we don't at all and, or in any way penalize them for anything that they've done that you know, would be um, sort of later on in the process. So that should give you a little bit of an idea sort of of how um, the, you know, the whole you know, process you know, kind of happens. Um, we try and turn around our decisions pretty quickly. Um, and uh, if you have um, any questions at this point, I'd be more than happy to answer them. But I hope that gives you a little bit of an introduction to the University of Vermont. And um, thank you so much for listening today. I really appreciate it. So are there any questions about majors? What's life like in the United States yeah, on a college campus? How can, how can I sort of help to, to answer any questions that you have? Any questions? Are there particular clubs, organizations that you're interested in? Things that you're considering in terms of your campus um, that you're interested in? Okay, um, well, um, if there aren't any questions um, or any other sort of burning things, um, more than happy to work with other students um, in terms of questions. And if you can't think of them or you're having an issue um, posting them or anything like that, 
Um, I'll give you my email address um, as well as that of our Middle East coordinator. Um, my, my email address is mtracy at ubm dot edu. So it's m t r a c y at u b m dot edu. And then one of the person in our office who generally uh, covers the Middle East um, is uh, Katrina Swartout, and her email is uh, Katrina K A T R Y N A dot Swartout S W A R T W O U T at U V M dot E D U. So if you have any questions, by all means, feel free to email uh, Katrina or myself. We'd be more than happy to work with you uh, on your application if you have any uh, issues. Um, but we really thank you for, for taking time to um, listen to a little bit about the university. We'd also encourage you to go to, to our website, uvm.edu. So that's uvm.edu. Um, and take a look at all the different things that uh, we have at the University of Vermont um, to offer. Um, so thank you so much. Really appreciate it and um, look forward to, to working with you in the future.